which literally means in the mouth of the wolf, but I know she means well. <laughs> Traditional Italian saying in opera, in any case. I'm always happy to hear her say it. Um, you have followed me now for nearly 40 years. Luckily, she thought I had promise. <laughs> Back in the late 70s when I was singing at Mickey's and she came and reviewed me, in for Reverend Sun Yun Moon's newspaper. <laughs> so I really got a great start. Your methods of teaching are very Socratic. You ask a lot of questions. Can you feel a lift? Can you feel a difference? Can you feel the buzz? That is different. Could you feel it? Let the air do it. You're also very hands-on which is really right for someone who has practiced Reiki. You hear every sound, every note. Clearly, you want to help your students understand not just how marvelous singing can feel, but how to create and recognize and trust that feeling. More than once, you've told me, don't go for the sound, go for the feeling. Your background was in the classical world. But you once told me that Julie Wilson, whom you came to realize delved deep into the emotions of the song, taught you about cabaret and turned you around 180 degrees. And now you feel that all the wonders of the world are found in the great American songbook. You appreciate and support so many singers, a few of us who are here today, we even came to love Baby Jane, and, and Lord knows you're a legendary fan of Marilyn, so I count myself really lucky to be in their company. Today, I have a chance to thank you with a song by Maltby and Shire, because alongside my mother, whose very low voice gave me hope, you gave me and continue to give me the confidence to sing. My mother's pride was in her hands. The piano was her soul. I watched in wonder as she played show tunes miles off from rock and roll. What she loved she taught me, now music's what I do, and often when I'm writing in my hands, she's there too. There are two cakes, and the reason for the two cakes is uh, that there are several birthdays that come together at this particular point in time. Uh, tomorrow is, is Miss Aker's birthday, and, and, it's, and it's particularly gratifying to me because then she, as of tomorrow she's as old as I am again. And then the next, the next one, this this fellow would have been born on the same day as Karen, except for a very very determined Jewish woman in, in in Iowa. But I'll let him explain that to you when he gets up here. 
And then Mary Cavanaugh shares the birthday with uh, with Rosamond. So the second day is to finish each and every one of them. The only other thing I want to say is that the last decade or so that uh, Rosamond and I have, uh, and Rosella have become very close friends have been uh, absolutely marvelous. And uh, most of the people in this room I know because of her. And uh, it's been a very rich experience. And she has given me so much. And I thank you. Rosamond. I've gone out of my way to pick something where I sing in a voice you'll like. <laughs> I can only give you love that lasts forever and a promise to return your every call within at least six months. <laughs> and the old heart I own is yours and yours alone. That's all. That's all. Oh. Are you surprised? Is it lovely? Isn't this lovely? Isn't it wonderful? Because we all love you so much. That's why. I know I am. I'm so glad there's someone older than I am. I'm always so glad when you attend. Other than that, I never can win. And, uh, you know, what I'm singing for you is not very apropos to a birthday, for heaven's sake. But you'd probably slap me if I didn't do this. <laughs> so, this is her most, my most requested song from Rosamond. Every time, and if I leave it out of the show, she'll, I, I mean, you know, I'll be doing 30 songs in the show, and after the time she'll sing, but you didn't sing, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Guess who celebrates her birth today? <laughs> yes, it's a special friend of mine. And I wish to say, even though I think the song is sad, I find <laughs> she always wants to hear it. <laughs> so here's the umpteenth time. Again, here's the three-act play. <laughs> You're so late getting home. <laughs> Did you miss your train? Were you caught in the rain? No, don't bother to explain. Can I fix you a quick martini? As a matter of fact, I'll have one with you. For to tell you the truth, <laughs> I've had Quite a day to guess who I saw today, my dear. I went in town to shop around for something new and thought I'd stop to have a bite when I was through. I looked around for, for some place new. Then it occurred to me where I had parked the car. There was the most attractive French cafe and bar. It really wasn't very far. I'm not going to say a word. I'm going to let Johnny Mercer say it all. Could I be lit if I went right in front of her? Probably not. I'll stay here. I search for phrases to sing your praises, but there aren't any magic adjectives to tell you all you are. You're just too marvelous, too marvelous for words like glorious, 
glamorous than that old standby amorous. It's all too wonderful. I'll never find the words that say enough, that tell enough. I mean, they just aren't swell enough. Thank you very, very much. I am so honored to be here to pay this beautiful tribute to this lovely lady, Rosamund. And I can't think of a better song to pay tribute to her than this uh, beautiful one uh, written by Jerome Kern and Oscar Hammerstein II, which is considered to be one of the greatest songs ever written for the great American songbook. You are the promised kiss of springtime that makes the lonely winter seem long. You're the salt in my stew. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. You're the starch in my collar. You're the lace in my shoe, even when I'm wearing moccasins. You will always be my necessity. I'd be lost without you. Rosamond, oh my God. You know, people always hesitate to give advice to somebody uh, who is who is over the age of whatever. But I will not hesitate to give you advice, my darling. Heed these words. Don't save your kisses. Pass them around. You'll find my reasoning is logically sound. Now who's gonna know that you passed them around? A hundred years from today. <laughs> Why live in a penthouse fit for a queen? You're just as near heaven on Mother Earth's green. What if you had millions? What would they all mean a hundred years from today? I have no idea whether you'll have use of this. But I want to give something to you. I want to give to you a cold porter song. I know too well that I'm just wasting precious time thinking such a thing could be that you could ever care for me. I know you hate to hear I adore you, dear, but grant me just the same. Not me. I'm not entirely to blame for you. Be so easy to love, so easy to idolize. All others above. Well, to keep every home fire burning for We'd be so grand at the game So carefree together That it does seem a shame But you can't see your future with me Cause you'd be oh so easy Karen Akers, my mother had a very high voice. <laughs> and um, since Rosamond, I know you were you were president of the Emporia Arts Council. 
And as many of you know, uh, this, these things here uh, aren't the friends. It's not, this is not a friend of Sopranos. So I'm going to sing this Noel Coward song. Thank God. Steve Ross is at the piano. Steve Ross from Noel Coward. It's, it's a natural. I'm going to sing this sans mic for you, Rosamond. In the original key that Noel Coward wrote it in. And, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Because these weren't so popular when you were born. <laughs> Life is very rough and tumble for a humble shunter. One can be trained, one's troubles never, whatever. Night after night, happens, whether you're wealthy or ill, people must laugh their fill. You mustn't sleep too long. The might never really grow. Life's a jungle in here. And in my efforts to succeed, I've had to fall dreams of dreams. I believe in doing what I can, crying when I must, and laughing when I choose. If love were all, I Take it serious, I know you don't. <laughs> Life's too mysterious. You work, you save, you worry so, but you can't take your dough when you go. <laughs> 
We worked very hard on this, Rosamund. We never could really get it together. We never could really get it together. I've been up for three days till 12.30 in the morning. Yes. Today we can say it's a birthday. Cause we're celebrating the birthday of the lady so dear. She's the reason we're here. Entertainment she knows. She's a teacher. So sing it in tune, and you'll reach her. <laughs> She's an audience who remains ever true. Everybody. Rosamund. When you find your hearing opera with all of its bling, <laughs> your teaching expertise is what we're cheering. You observe every note that they sing. So she sits with the crowd and she's quiet. You know she could instigate riot. <laughs> if you're sharp or you're flat, she'll know where you're at. She's awesome. <laughs> Just for you, Brian. In this party, we think it's swell, slightly arty, because he's the one who knows how it's done, just for you, Rosamund. Oh, no, it's me. <laughs> we agree that you bring... Wait a minute, wait a minute. We agree that you bring loyal listening when we see your cap ever glistening. <laughs> You're the audience who always loves what we do. It's Rosalba. It's a 
Joe.